Historically, employee benefits are the second largest line item on the books for mid-sized businesses. Yet planning for that spend over five years or even three years can seem impossible. Over the last five years, more than a third of companies have received at least one health insurance increase of 30% or greater. The chance of being hit with a claimant of $1 million or more has doubled since 2010, and the consequences for a fully insured or standalone self-funded group can be catastrophic when the policy renews. This inability to plan, along with the challenges of ever-changing employee compliance, create a major hole in budgets year after year. BSI Core was created to provide predictable financial stability. Mid-sized companies, whether fully insured or self-insured on their own, are on an island. This exclusive platform provides companies access to the leveraged buying power of over 200 employers and 15,000 members, offering true protection from risk that cannot be found elsewhere in the market. Encompassing a proven funding model with all BSI's best-in-class services, we make sure every client has access to the services and tools necessary to control their health benefits without the typical risks. We have a dedicated team who are assigned to each account. We understand each plan and anticipate the next step for all our clients, while providing full actuarial support of claims data, compliance reviews, and ongoing guidance. Put your company back in the driver's seat in the race against rising healthcare costs with BSI Core. Good morning, everyone. What's the reason we have a full house here today, right? We have healthcare problems going on, right? Healthcare costs are going up every single year. Employers are dealing with large rate increases year over year. So I want to thank everyone for coming. I think we have a very great program for you today. I think we really what we've done with BSI Core, hopefully what you saw in the video, that we found a solution to really help employers control their healthcare going forward, right? It's a complicated world. You got a lot of stuff going on with the ACA and all those kinds of things. And I think we got a great program to help uh, help everyone with that solution. So let's dive in. This is me. I'm Sean Hughes. I'm the vice president here at, at BSI. Uh, I've been working at BSI for about five years. Um, I got a lot of carrier experience. Unfor unfortunately, I've been in this industry for 23 years. Yes, very depressing. I had a full head of hair when I started this industry, right? It'll do that to you. I'm telling you, right? Um, but I have a lot of experience. I worked down in Nashville. I worked for Cigna Healthcare, so I have a really nice national experience to kind of help employers make sure we're controlling their costs going forward. A little bit about BSI. I think you hopefully you've seen a lot of our names out here in the market. Um, a lot of all of us here, we live here in Lehigh Valley. We work here in Lehigh Valley. We have fun here in the Valley, right? Look at the Iron Pigs. This is a great, great facility here. We love being here. Iron Pigs had a great year this year, right? Made the playoffs. Playoffs didn't go that well, but still making the playoffs is a very good thing for the Iron Pigs, right? So we're here. We're based here in the Lehigh Valley. We also have an office in, in Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. That's a five-hour story. If you want to hear Tony's story of why we have an office in Michigan and, Detroit, and uh, Lehigh Valley, talk to Tony. He'll talk to you on that one. But overall, we're an independent employee benefits consulting firm. What that means is we work for our clients, right? We do not work for the insurance carriers. We do not uh, pitch products. We're, 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 our number one thing is to work for our clients and make sure we're delivering best-in-class services and also controlling their costs the best that we possibly can. We have over 100 clients in 32 states. We have small clients, up to clients that are several thousand employees in multiple states. Um, again, we're licensed with all the insurance carriers. You'll hear a lot in the market that's going on right now of people putting products out there. You become married to an insurance carrier. Again, we're going to put an insurance carrier in place that's best for that particular employer. Also, fastest growing in the Lehigh Valley, the fastest growing employee benefits consultant um, 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 uh, according to Lehigh Valley Business. Michael works here from Lehigh Valley Business, great partner. That's an award you just can't win, right? Or you can't win just because you sponsored something. This is something you have to win by growing year over year, all right? And that's something we're very proud of. We've been nominated every year, including 2016. So growing is, is uh, you know, obviously very good for us. So there's the map. This is the, the states that we're at. Again, this is one of the things we focus in on. We have a lot of employers with multi-locations across the country. Health insurance is kind of health insurance in every single different state that's out there, 
all right? But trying to find a way to control that, what we've done with BSI Core that we're gonna talk a lot about today is how we control that. A lot of those thousand plus employers that we represent, we have a great model to control their cost. It becomes very predictable. When you're 2,000 lives, it's very predictable what your health insurance costs are gonna be. When you're in the 50 to 500 segment, it's very unpredictable. One or two people can spike your claims year over year. And what we've done is found a way to take that uh, predictability, put it in that size segment, at the same time wrapping all our best-in-class services around that. Okay, so what's the reason that we're here today? What's the reason that we have a full house here today, right? This market in the 50 to 500 segment, this market has been underserved, overcharged, and basically devalued. Right? I think we all deal with it. This is that time of year, right? We love the fall, we love this time of year, but it's also that time of year a broker like myself might be coming to you and they're delivering that uh, um, um, a rate increase. What's it gonna look like? Is it 2%, is it 50%? You have no idea what's coming, right? It's uncontrolled. You don't know whether or not it's gonna blow up your budget or, or actually help your budget, all right? Also from a data standpoint, you're also in a size segment where the data is very limited. Right? We always love it. Insurance carriers will come out. This is the rate increase that we need for this year. Right? I need 40 because your claims experience is bad and you're very credible. Next year they come out with two. Well, we still need something and you ran well, but we still need some kind of rate increase. But you're trying to make decisions and not having any data going forward. Probably a lot of you have made decisions in, in the past. Hey, let's just increase the deductible, change the copay. You don't know whether or not it's going to control your cost a lot going forward in, in the future. All right? It becomes a one-year fix. What we're gonna talk about is a five-year strategy, all right? It's really that long-term strategy to make sure we're controlling that cost over a long term, all right? We have a lot of CFOs here in the room today. You have plans for all your other expenses, but you don't have a plan for your healthcare. That's what we're gonna talk about today. That's what we've created BSI Core for, because it's gonna control that. You're just not making those one-year decisions. You're actually planning for the future, all right? This is one of the, un again, very unpredictable expense. You don't know what's coming. Are you getting a small increase, a large increase? A lot of times when you get that small increase, what ended up happening? The insurance carrier kept your money. All right, we're gonna talk about ways that if you run well in BSI Core, you actually get money back. All right, and medical inflation. I think we all realize health insurance is not going down. Right, that bar is going up. What we wanna do is make sure we control that bar going forward. Okay, so who's out there to help us? Who do we think is gonna help us right now? All right, and I don't think this is gonna provide much help, right? The government, right? What's going on right now? We got a heck of an election going on. Are any of our two candidates talking about healthcare right now? Right? All they're doing is jabbing each other, right? It's like a, almost like a joke. It's like two kids playing at recess going at each other right now, right? Healthcare, if we think the government's gonna help, I think we're kidding ourselves. We've gone through Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. How many people think the Affordable Care Act has helped keep costs down, right? If anything, it's driven costs up. We now have new reporting that's required new guidelines, small segment has different rating, there's all kinds of things that's doing nothing but actually increasing costs for us. You're probably seeing all the healthcare merges that are out there. If we had one hospital system here in the Lehigh Valley, do we think that would be a good thing? They would control the rates, the rates would go up off the charts. You also have insurance carriers, right? A lot of these are for-profit companies. The Capital Blue Crosses of the world, they'll tell you they're non-profit, uh, non but they certainly are not uh, you know, out there trying to lose money. Right? So they're putting these products together. A lot of these products are becoming skinny networks. Right? Highmark now has a product with Lehigh Valley Health Network. What that product is, if you want to steer your people just to Lehigh Valley Health Network, you get a slightly better price. But we've looked at data, about 50% of your population does not use Lehigh Valley Health Network. The other 50% uses St. Luke's, Coordinated Health, the other facilities around here. So are you ready to save a couple bucks and tell 50% of their employees that they have to change doctors? All right, those are the type of products that are out there. Again, they are more one-year fixes. They're gonna actually drive costs up year over year. So what are the funding models that are out there today? There's really two funding models that probably most of the people in the room are in. You're probably in a fully insured model or in your self-funded self model where you're a standalone product. You'll also hear level funded, right? So it's really a self-funded product where they put stop loss protection over the top. So why are these models unsustainable? Why don't they work? All right, here is why. If you're fully insured, you have a little bit of a protection. They think that you're in an overall pool, but still your rate increase is based off of your claims experience. You run poorly, they're gonna hit you with a high rate increase. You run great, that, this is where I always love it. That insurance carrier comes in or the broker comes in and say, hey, great news, you're only getting a 5% increase. What that means is you overpaid for healthcare the year before and the insurance carrier kept your money, all right? It also only takes one large claim. 
You have one claim could spike your whole entire rate increase. I've dealt with groups in the past, 50 Life Group had one large claim, they're staring at a 40% rate increase. We're gonna talk about BSI Core, how we protect you from that kind of risk. Also, we talked about the lack of data. Again, you're making decisions going forward, whether that's putting in a wellness program, making plan design changes, you're kind of doing that in the dark without any kind of claims experience. And we've talked about the profits. The other thing about the taxes and expenses, right? Fully insured, there's more taxes built in there, there's risk charges. So automatically you're paying more for healthcare when you're in a fully insured model, all right? So some of you might say, great, well, I am self-funded, all right? Self-funded standalone is a very risky thing. Because again, what, how you're rated is gonna be based off of your individual claims experience. We're gonna talk about BSI Core where you're in a much bigger pool going forward. Anyone know what lasers are, all right? Lasers, is, it was where they can take, because what do you have when you're self-funded? They have two types of stop loss protection, at an individual level and also at an aggregate level. So at an individual level, what insurance carriers will do, if they don't like the risk of one particular person, they'll take that person's specific deductible and they will increase it. Let's say for some reason I had cancer, all right, and I'm a $300,000 claim, and the group normally has $100,000 specific. They will say for Sean, his, his specific deductible is $300,000. What does that really mean? That risk just got shifted from the insurance carrier onto the employer, and that's a guaranteed risk that's coming. You're now taking on $200,000 more, okay? We'll talk about BSI Core does not have any lasers built into it, all right? There's also no caps. All right, you will deal with a rate increase. You're not sure what that rate increase ultimately is year over year. Aggregate, aggregate stop loss is that protection of the entire group. If we're an employer here, stop loss carriers will give you protection of the entire group. What they will do though is they'll say, we expect you to run here and they will slap a 25% risk on top of it. Our model caps that at 10%. So if you have a million dollars in expected claims, they will put another $250,000 on top of it our model only puts 100. We've now taken $150,000 and moved that risk off your desk, okay? Again, all those good things. Also, some of these models, the insurance carriers will see, actually keep some of your profits, all right? I've seen the Cigna models. I've seen the United models. You can go into these level-funded products. If you run well, they actually still actually keep a portion of those risks, okay? So I'm going to turn it over to Tony here in a second, but I got a science experiment for you. Hopefully this goes well because I'm also a magician here on the side. All right, this is hopefully gonna sum up, and Katie, you're gonna be my example here. All right, this is what we're dealing with healthcare right now. If I fill this glass up to the top with water, let's say that's our insurance premium that we're paying this giving year, all right? I'm a fully insured client, that's how much insurance I'm paying for the giving year. Let's say this is a million dollar claim, this golf ball is a million dollar claim. If I would drop that in there, what's gonna happen? Besides Katie punching me, what's gonna happen, right? That water is going to go over, uh, all over the place, and I got a mess, right? So how do we normally fix that? What we do is we just buy a bigger glass. That's more premium. That insurance carrier has to charge you to get that exact same risk. Or we make plan design changes where we just shift costs off to the employer. What we're going to talk about here with BSI Core is instead of dropping this glass, we're throwing the golf ball basically in the ocean, right? If I throw this in the ocean, it has a much different impact whether or not I drop in that glass of water. All right, so hopefully that's a little bit of an illustration that I'll talk about BSI Core of how we're taking that risk and really mitigating risk and shifting it to another bucket, okay? All right, so that hopefully tees it up. I wanna to introduce Tony DeRay, our agency principal. He's gonna talk about the, how we've created BSI Core. It's kinda of got two sides to it. It has the funding model and the BSI services, and Tony's really gonna go into that uh, actual funding model. Thanks, John. Such a great uh, introduction in that before I get into my slides, I want to go over the history of the labor movement in Detroit. So if we got a little extra, because I think you finished a little early, so we could get into that piece. Uh, th thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, obviously, what a great uh, mixture uh, of crew today. Uh, we have some amazing advocates that uh, have been partners of ours for a long time. We have some great clients uh, that are here uh, that have been great clients for a long time. Uh, and then we certainly have a lot of uh, great people in the business community uh, that we've been fortunate enough to meet uh, and certainly we're talking to in a business capacity for the first time today. So I just want to give you a little history of how BSI Core came about. This is our mission statement. BSI is an advocate for our clients on a human and financial level. And BSI Core, there's not a separate mission statement. It's a progression and it's us putting some teeth to something that we've always tried to do. 
in the 50 to 500 space. So although we represent clients that are much larger uh, here and across the country in that 500 to 5,000 space, living up to this mission statement in the 50 to 500 space, which we represent a, a lot of clients, has been a challenge over the years. So really the concept has started right around 2009. When you look at being an advocate for clients on a human and financial level, what does that mean to us? So certainly, like Sean said, we're in the room because of the financial, because of how high increases have been over the year, because of the unpredictability. Well, when you have thousands of employees, like Sean said, we become much more stable. We're able to control that risk in a lot of different ways. But the problem in delivering on our promise to our clients in that 50 to 500 space is that we have access up until uh, a few years ago to the same types of uh, tools or models that Sean just reviewed, fully insured, standalone, uh, on your own. So when it came time to hold up to our end of our mission statement on the financial end, we were in that one-year fix as well, as opposed to that five-year plan. So BSI Core is an extension of our mission statement. It's us searching actively since 2009 for that solution to be able to provide that financial stability. So you can look at healthcare as a five-year plan like you would in any other piece of your business. You know, I was thinking this morning, uh, you know, about salaries. Can you imagine if salaries for your industry, your company, happen the way that healthcare happens? where you sit back and wait for somebody externally to come and sit down with you and tell you how much you have to pay your employees the following year. Right? It just doesn't work that way. It's impossible. Uh, so the BSI Core is an extension into that space to be able to deliver on our mission statement on that financial level. And then the human perspective, which Nick Trangooch, our director of sales, is going to talk about, is taking all of the services that BSI has put together since the inception of the firm, since the firm that I wanted to start in 2003. Those things, those services that we have always provided to all of our clients, packaging them with a financial model in that 50 to 500 space, which brings together uh, the ability to control your costs over time. That's BSI Core. Okay, so what is BSI Core? So BSI Core is, it, is the two distinct buckets that we're going to talk about. I'm going to spend time talking about the model, that protection from risk. This is that proven funding model that since 2009, the model that we've been able to take clients into and that BSI Core is focused on is about protection from risk. It's about a five-year plan. It's not the one-year fix. It's not about the, the race on a yearly uh, uh, basis to that, what's that lowest number? It's about beating the market over five years, winning against your competition. If you can control this line item as one of your top five line items, how does that set you up in competition with your competitors over a five-year time period? So I'm going to break it down by the core tenants. And what we've really tried to do is when we look at these differences in the market, in a fully insured or a standalone on your own, when we're looking for a model to truly protect organizations from risk, there are certain parameters that we're looking for along the way to make sure that you are protected from risk. So basically the model first, leverage stop loss buying power. So I've used here the examples from the video at the end to show this piece. So what is leverage buying power? So it's basically umbrella stop loss. What it is not is shared risk. You are not pooling claims together with these organizations. This model that we are using has over 200 employer groups, nearly 20,000 uh, members that are currently involved. Every two years, the stop loss is bid out in mass. One stop loss company gets awarded the business over top. So if you can think of it in a Costco model, okay? So if you're, if you're, you're, you're in Costco, when you get paper towels, if you're a single person, you go in and you get paper towels, you get them for a certain price. When the Durays go into Costco, based on my three animals and everything that they failed to be able to get in their mouths as opposed to on the floor, you're not sharing responsibility in my children's inability to eat properly. But you're all getting the benefit of the unit cost, as opposed to going to the gas station and buying the same pa uh, uh, paper towels. Right? So the leverage stop loss buying power, that's really the protection from the model overall. Okay. Uh, versus being self-insured on your own. And I'm going to get into this, those differences as we go down of what buying stop loss in mass means for being able to put protections in place to protect you from risk when that million dollar claim does come, which as obviously as Sean had mentioned and you saw in the video, the instance of million dollar claims has doubled since 2010. So if you are sitting in a situation where you know that this has happened to you, that would be uh, less unique. 
uh, than it was in the past. If it hasn't happened to you, the takeaway is it's coming. It's not if, but when. Because of some of the great things that are happening in healthcare. You obviously, you're getting, like, people's lives are being saved every day, but it's expensive. You know, sometimes there are now drugs that are hitting the market. If you've seen anything about specialty medication, there's all these multi-billion dollar drugs that are in the pipeline that you're gonna start to see roll out. And they're gonna save lives. They're gonna save our families' lives, our children's lives, their, your employees' lives, but they're expensive. And somebody has to pay for them when they roll off the line, okay? So these things, are, they're, they're, they're good and they're bad when you talk about cost, but leverage buying power is the core of the actual funding model, all right? So it's a way to buy stop loss in which when that million dollar claim hits, to Sean's example, it's not overflowing your bucket. All right, because you're protected overall. <clears throat> so the next piece is the one-year fix versus the five-year plan. All right, so in the last five years, fully insured groups are standalone self-funded. One-third of groups have taken at least one 30% increase. And when we're talking about our goal of putting together an actual five-year plan, because you don't know when that's coming, so I'm going to use my Italian hands, what we're trying to do in BSI Core, and we've successfully accomplished, is when you're looking at your budget, nobody's saying that healthcare is going like this, all right? We're still here, but the idea of can you have a successful five-year plan, you don't know where that 30% is coming. You don't know what year. So where's that gonna come from when it does hit? So the idea is, of the model is protection from risk. So we can close your variance on a year-over-year -year basis. So you can actually plan for five years because your margin is gonna be here instead of here without the swings, all right? So if you look at the other side, the green light, and this is where the model delivers. If you're self-funded versus fully insured, whether you're on your own or in a model like this, if you don't have any claims, you're gonna win versus being fully insured. It's an easy concept to understand, just like if you have an extremely high deductible plan and you have a very healthy person, right? Obviously, that's gonna benefit them as opposed to the sickest person. So that's easy concept. This is the most important part of the model. Since 2009, 200 employer groups, 12, barely 20,000 members, the largest increase in the history of the program is 21%, right? Not average, not a third, largest ever. The worst group out of 200 over five years, 21%. So this, is, this model is about protecting you from the bomb whenever it comes, all right? It's not about, it's not about if you're running perfect, obviously self-funded, any way you slice it is gonna be better than fully insured. But when you move into the model, it's about preparing for that worst case scenario, true protection from risk. All right, so this is a little bit of a, a model. I have a number of client uh, examples to use. So this is one of our clients that has been in the model for a number of years. So we went back in time, took their history over the last five years in their model, and we projected it forward so you can see how if they track over the next five years, uh, if they track like they just did, how it's gonna work, all right? So what I'm gonna do first is this. So pre pretend right now this is your decision, all right? Because this is what's coming for you in the next two months. This is Sean and that, the, that consultant or the insurance carrier, and they're coming to you with these options, all right? This is your fully insured or potentially your, your, your standalone self-funded option. This was this client uh, in the model, all right? Now to explain the difference of where you're starting. Now if I didn't show you the rest of this, on your way of typically handling healthcare, where do you normally end up? A year over year. You're only evaluating this piece because that's all that's put in front of you. So it's not unnatural to gravitate on a year over year basis to, look, I just gotta do this. Well, this is this number. This is your maximum liability. This isn't your expected. So if you're a fully insured group right now, the takeaway is when you move self-funded, standalone or otherwise, if your claims continue in the exact same way, you will save about 10 to 15%. That's based on lower admin charges, that's based on taxes that you avoid for healthcare reform, and that's based on the risk charge. When you're self-funded, you don't have to pay the insurance carrier, obviously, to, uh, to have margin in the business. So there's an actual other number here. When you move self-funded, if you're fully insured, th this client's decision, their expected was here, right? And we wanna talk about with them because there's real savings on the table. What would 10 to 15% look like for you? But this is the most important component. And if you're gonna take anything away from today and what we're doing with BSI Core, it's a five-year thought process, right? This is your maximum liability in the program. This is where you're expected would be for this client, this is their fully insured, and this is their max liability. They're even funding. So you know your worst case scenario is set, 
right? So the client decided to move into the model. And this is projecting out what happened to them going forward. So when they had that catastrophic claim, which they did in the model, it's obviously not what we want for a client, but it's based on protection from risk. In a fully insured mode, because we do bid out business every single year, when we talk about five-year plans, we're not talking about a five-year commitment. We're talking about a concept of developing a five-year. It's still a year-over-year -year decision process where we're evaluating the market, looking at your claims history, making decisions. It's still on that piece. But you're looking at a five-year uh, idea or concept. So when they got hit with this large claimant, the model protected them. This was a specific shot claim. So this is the increase that they received. This was, I believe, about 25%. And I think this came in at around 11 all right, so you start to see the gap in a group that we want you to run well. We would prefer our groups, and we have groups in the model that have great claims history. So you're gonna see more of this track, okay? This is, these examples are to show you what happens when it goes the other direction, okay? So you have here. Now, good claims year, right? So virtually the same. Why is it a little bit different here? So here, in a fully insured environment, when you run great, 50% loss ratio, you generate hundreds of thousands of dollars that you paid in in premium that weren't paid out in claims. Who wins here when that happens? Insurance carrier. Who wins here when you're self-funded? You do. I'll get to it a little bit, but in the model, it's 100% return of surplus funds. So when you're funding your max liability, an point, a, a, a important uh, point here. Here you're paying the insurance carrier. Bill comes every month, you pay it to the insurance carrier. Here you pay yourself. Within the model, it's a bank account. It's your own bank account. It's not, uh, it's because, it, like I mentioned, it's not uh, pooling risk. You're not going into an overall pool. Uh, you're, you have your own bank account which set up. When we talk about transparency and the data that's available, you'll see that it's more like what you're used to in all of your other uh, places in the world when you're managing finances, where you actually get to see on a monthly basis where all your money's going. All right, so that's very important. So here you're funding your own model. You're paying yourself. Here you're paying the insurance carrier. Here in this year, there was a surplus. All right, so you're going to build a balance up, which you get to carry over and use however you want in the next year and to offset any kind of trend or funding increase. With this group, they had another spike year. Again, you can see that it's always going to go up higher. The model protected them again. All right, so over this course of time, if this employer runs the same way they ran over the last five years, $1 million. One million dollars is the difference over five years. It's a hundred life case. It's not 5,000, not our, some of our 3,000, 4,000 life cases. This is a hundred employer company, a million dollars over five years. Would that be significant to your bottom line about managing risk? Now, of course, again, we want you to run uh, fantastic. We have a lot of tools that Nick's gonna talk about from a service perspective to try to bend trend. We're not trying to make anybody marathon runners. But if we can use various tools to shave one, two, three percent off of your bottom line, in addition to having the model in place to protect you from risk, that's what starts to bend the curve. That's what starts to bring the hands together on a five-year plan so you can adequately prepare uh, over a five-year period. <clears throat> all right, the next component. So here's the million-dollar claim. So you're in the model, all right, or you're in your current situation, fully insured, standalone on your own or you're in uh, BSI Core's model. Million dollar claim hits. I guess I'll take a second to say that Digital Feast couldn't get, they're supposed to be me, but leg-wise, they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't exactly get it. So, uh, so that's the guy we have to use. So this million dollar claim hits. So some of the protections that are in the model, so you can understand some of the things that are going on after that million dollar claim does hit you, and thinking about your own fully insured world, self, standalone, self-funded. So the first piece of this is no renewal laser. So Sean talked a little bit about what lasers are. So when you're in the BSI core model and you have somebody that, uh, this is typically how it happens, somebody starts to take anti-rejection medication, right? You have to take anti-rejection medication for months and months or even years before you can actually get a transplant. That starts to, shows up at lists at the insurance carrier. It starts to bring up flags because they know that there is a transplant coming. So in year one, fully insured or standalone self-funded, you're gonna be protected because you have those risks uh, in place. What happens when it actually hits or what happens in year two? To Sean's point, they're gonna put a laser on. So if you got somebody that's coming with a million dollar claim and the insurance carrier knows that they're gonna be a million dollar claim, it's not a shot claim, it's not something that came out of the blue, they're gonna say we cover all of you at this level and this one we're not covering until 500,000. 
That is pure shifted risk from them to you. And that's very common in both a fully insured and a self-funded standalone uh, market. And it's not insurance. Imagine an insurance carrier that doesn't want to insure the one risk that you have. You have a 300 employee company, you're not gonna have five transplants. You're gonna have one. And that's the one that you have to prepare for. Uh, or preemie babies or a uh, significant cancer. You're not gonna have 80% of your people that have these things. We're talking about a handful of things, okay? So no renewal lasers. So think about that on a year over year basis. You come into the model, everybody is healthy. Somebody unfortunately gets diagnosed with a disease that's gonna cost them half a million dollars. Going forward, everywhere else you're at, you're gonna pay the full force of that 500,000. In the model, you're gonna be at the same specific uh, aggregate stop loss that you were right from the start, which I'll talk about, which is typically 50 to $55,000. Most of you that are self-funded today have specific deductibles that may reach as high as 100 or 125,000 before the insurance carrier comes in. Cap stop loss renewals. Year two after a million dollar claim, what's gonna to happen to you? So your stop loss, you can't go anywhere else if you're self-funded on your own. You're not gonna go back fully insured because the fully insured carrier doesn't wanna take on your risk. So what are you gonna do? You're kind of at the mercy of the stop loss carrier that you're with on a standalone basis. So they're gonna to come to you and say, okay, you have a guaranteed renewable policy. We have to cover this person. We have to cover you. We're gonna cover everybody else at 100, we're gonna cover this guy at, uh, after 500, and you're getting 125% increase on your stop loss premium. That's the typical conversation that happens on year two. The reason that we have developed core and really have gotten behind this model, more and more groups in the 50 to 500 space are going self-funded because that's the trend since Affordable Care Act has come out. But we increasingly find companies, we literally have conversations with employer groups that have hundreds of employers where they're self-funded on their own and you sit down and you say, who's the insurance carrier? And they say, Capital Blue Cross, Highmark, Aetna, you're the insurance carrier. You're just paying them to carry the card in their wallet. So the concept is people are jumping into the self-insured world because, you know, and I'm gonna go back for a second, and I think this is a conversation that typically you may have in other places. It would be great for us from a promotion or sales perspective to put the expected line here, but that's not what the model is about. The model is about uh, max liability. If you're being shown self-funded models and you're fully insured, this is typically what you're seeing. You're expected, you should do this. It's 15% savings if everything goes great. You're not getting talked to about it. What happens in year two? What happens in year three? What are the protections in the contract to prevent, not when everybody is best friends and claims are going great, but when the wheels fall off? What happens there? So from a BSI concept, although it'd be great to say, in the model, let's talk about expected and how much money you can save. The model is not about that, it's about protection from risk and the savings come over a five year period, all right? <clears throat> that last piece on the cap stop loss, so that 125% stop loss increase in the standalone, within the program, every two years when it's negotiated in mass, there are cap stop loss put across the board. 15% is where it stands at right now. Every two years it's negotiated. So if you're that one group that does have that million dollar claim, you're not looking at that 130% increase on that line item in your budget, the stop loss premium. You're looking at a cap 15%. Protection from risk. Lower specific and aggregate stop loss attachments. Specific, like Sean mentioned, is one person. That's the most expensive part of stop loss because you never know when that claim or where it's going to hit. That's what all the premium goes to. Most companies in a standalone environment set their specific at 100, 125, 150,000. That means you pay that first, then the insurance carrier comes in afterwards. The specific stop loss in the model starts at 50,000, $55,000. So right away, if you are a self-funded group and you do know that you had three catastrophic claims last year and they were each $200,000 a piece, that's automatic savings in the program because the specific is capped at 55 where the, the insurance carrier takes the risk over the top of that. And that's purchased through that leverage stop loss ability, as opposed to that standalone. The reason groups creep up every year, Sean mentioned this about those decisions on deductibles, well when you're self-funded, one of the decisions, you can't make decisions on your claims because they are what they are, but you can make decisions on your fixed costs. So one of the things that stop loss are fully insured on their, or self-insured on their own groups do, is they look at, okay, my premium for $100,000 specific deductible is X, 
I can save by moving to $150,000 specific. But have you saved or have you just taken on risk? Right? And that's the difference. You know, when you're just looking to say, all right, on a year-over-year -year basis, I'm going to raise that deductible or I'm going to save this money. Aggregate is important as well. Aggregate is when the claims of your organization rise together. Not one specific claim, but all of them. So there's that protection as well. Self-funded on your own, it's typically set at 120 or 25% of your expected claims, which means you have to blow through your expected claims by 20 to 25% before the insurance carrier steps in. In the model, 110%. So the likelihood of you having protection, the likelihood of you running 110, 112 is a lot greater than you running uh, 125. That's why uh, that insurance is so uh, unexpensive, because they know you're never going to hit it. Right? They're selling you insurance, and it's dirt cheap, because it's very rare, uh, even in, your, in a size segment of 50 to 500, that you're actually going to trigger the insurance carrier having to pay. All right? so, but in the event that you do rise in aggregate, which we do have examples of that, uh, you're going to be able to get insurance protection quicker. All right, so this is a case study. MicroClean's a client of ours here locally. Uh, just to give you an idea of what happens when your claims rise in aggregate, okay? So this is a, this is a company that went in the program a few years ago in 14, and this is just to give you an idea. Now, we do actively search the market for our clients every single year. Just because you're in the model, we believe in the model, the model is trusted and true, we're still going to do our job on a yearly basis to make sure that you have all of the solutions that are available in the market for your consideration. All right? So this is a little bit how they, they performed. They came in in January 14. In aggregate, their claims were really high. They didn't have million dollar spec claims. They had a very high rise in their claims overall. Their projected claim fund, you can think of this as loss ratio if you're used to that in kind of a terminology. How much did you pay in versus how much the insurance carrier pay out? 121%, very high. 80% is where an insurance carrier would typically want you. The best fully insured renewal on the market, 18.7%. What they got from uh, the consortium, the level funded uh, model, 4.5%. That's where that separation has started. All right? And you can see that it continued with this group. 127% of their claims fund in 2016, 40% was the best available fully insured renewal. They got 16% from the market. Okay, protection from risk. Surplus return. So in my graph model, when I was talking about fully insured, when you run fantastic, there's no, in a fully insured uh, environment, there's no money coming back. Right? And going forward, these are kind of underwriting conversations that we have with the, with the insurance carriers. And I know that we talk about them a certain way, please understand that we have millions of dollars of business and client money that's placed with Capital and Highmark and Aetna, but our job is to be an advocate for our clients, not the insurance carriers. We're not a mouthpiece. We're not expensive FedEx, which is what you'll find a lot, you know, maybe in our industry, which is Capital Blue Cross gives the renewal to the broker, broker puts their label on it, walks it down the street, adds 5%, delivers it on your desk and says, you should be lucky. You're getting 12%, everybody else is getting 15 Done deal. That's that, that is a typical renewal process. Okay, so uh, we work very well with the insurance carriers, but we don't work for them. We work for you, right? So I think our, our reputation in the market is tough but fair, right? We're not typically easy to deal with because we're not just we're pushing back on a lot of the things that come down uh, line from the carriers. Like Sean mentioned, Capital Blue Cross, Highmark, great insurance carriers. They're going to pay the claims. They're filed as nonprofits. They should be filed as not for loss because that's more the reality of the, the, the situation. Surplus return. So in the model, some of the models that are out there on a self-funded standalone, on, on, on your own, some of those models actually, if you run well, even though you're, you're self-funded, the insurance carrier is keeping a portion of those claims. So you're not getting 100% surplus return. In the model, 100% of your unused claims fund rolls over from year to year. It's yours to use freely. Typically. From a BSI perspective, what we're going to give you high level is don't tar the roof with it, right? The idea of building a five-year plan is to prepare the best you can for the rainy day, the million-dollar claim. So you run fantastic and you rob that bucket to, to solve some other problem, it certainly can be done, but it would be the equivalent. I know we have some financial services guys here. It would be the equivalent of taking money out of your whatever at 25 years old, penalty plus tax, right? It doesn't make sense you know, to, to, to go and do that, but it's there if you need it. The idea of the surplus return is we're going to work through it from a client-by-client -client basis, and we're going to say, look, if you need to take some money off the table to smooth over a renewal, that makes sense. But in the same time, we want to try to keep as much money kind of in that surplus bucket to adequately prepare for your rainy day to close those gaps. 
All right, the flexibility of the model. This is extremely important. Right? Because it's not about jamming you into any insurance carrier or any plan design. And there are more and more of that out there in the market, like Sean again talked about with these hospital mergers, with insurance carriers, specific products, uh, cookie cutter plan design. So takeaways. So on a funding model flexibility, there are two options from a funding model perspective. Level funding. So if you're fully insured now, you pay relatively the same amount every month. And then there's that meeting at the end of the year where you're told that things didn't go so well and you owe more money. But from a level funding perspective, at least you can understand cash flow. Our larger 1,000 to 3,000 life companies, they typically pay as they go, right? And it's self-funded environment. So they're paying their claims on a weekly basis plus admin because they can handle those swings in cash. The program allows for you to do either uh, with some guidelines on size of company. But in your size segment, the majority of you, 50 to 500, level funding is typically an adequate move from fully insured. Because when you're coming from a fully insured world, you're used to being able to set your budget. That's one of the reasons that companies stay fully insured. I don't like that meeting. I don't like that 25% increase, but at least I know. I know that it's not gonna get any worse. So then I can go and, and rob some other part of my business to pay for that, but at least I know. So in a level funding model, in a self-funded model, you know your max liability. Level funding, max liability, those are inter interchangeable terms. So you're able to set at the beginning of the year, I'm paying this every single month. And then you're getting detailed, transparent reporting on a monthly basis on where every dollar is going. Right? Extremely important to people that are trying to control their costs to actually see where the money is going on a monthly basis. That's not the world that you typically live in. Uh, with a fully insured or self-funded on your own, where you're getting that robust reporting on a monthly basis. Choose your carrier. Capital Blue Cross, Highmark, Aetna, United, Cigna, all participants in the program, right? Meaning, you're paying these insurance carriers for your employees. Let's talk about what it means for them. Same hospitals, same doctors, same card in their wallet. Unless you tell them, they have no idea that a funding model behind the scenes has changed. It's very important when you talk about uh, member disruption. When you're talking about some of these narrow network models that are starting to become more popular, that decision, if we were recommending to a client, which we will have to have those conversations, we would not take lightly. What is it worth to you as a business, from a disruption perspective, to tell half of your employees that they have to change doctors? That is the sacred cow in our business. If you're gonna make that decision, if we were gonna recommend that, there better be a pile of money on the table that you can justify to your employees making, having them make that decision. But carrier of choice. So if you're with Capital or Highmark or any of the other for profits, they're still there from an ASO perspective, uh, administrative services. You pay them to still process the claims, issue explanation of benefits, the discounts, if any of you are familiar with the explanation of benefits. Has a couple numbers, the first one. This is the ridiculous amount the hospital tried to charge. This is the amount they're contractually obligated to. This is what you owe as a patient. Even when you're self-funded, that's what you're paying those insurance carriers for, their discount, right? So you don't pay $6,000 for an ibuprofen. You pay what they negotiated for their contract. So that's an important concept to understand if you've never considered self-funding uh, before. All right, so employer-controlled plan design. There's no cookie-cutter plans. So we're gonna obviously work with groups to optimize your plan design over time because we wanna be able to control cost. And there are ways that, we, that, there are proven ways to do that within plan design. But Rome wasn't built in a day. You can't all of a sudden have a zero dollar deductible and no drug copay, and then all of a sudden go tell your employees we're going to a 6,000, 12,000 deductible and you don't get any help from us as a company. You guys have lived that, you know that it's a very difficult conversation. So it's baby steps, but there are things that can be done. But Right now today, if you are fully insured, the plan that you have today and the care you have today carries right over to the model, okay? So from a disruption perspective, it doesn't exist for your employees. Okay, transparency. So this is, you can't see it, and I'm gonna highlight it in a second. This is an example, there's a plethora of reports that groups in the model receive. This is a report that they receive on a monthly basis, all right? So basically this is a client of ours, month by month since inception of the plan where every single dollar went. Imagine the concept, okay? This is just a, the, imagine seeing this. I'm gonna stop on broker fee, okay? Can you imagine every month in a fully insured environment, if your bill right at the top, Capital Blue Cross said, we just paid your broker this on a monthly basis. Do you think that they would work harder or not as hard, right? 
That's the change that's coming in our market. But from a BSI perspective, we've always been transparent about those. We're a consulting firm. We're not an insurance agent or a broker, right? But when you see that every month, it's every single month, this kind of transparency, where every single dollar is going. Right now, if you're fully insured, what do you see? This is my single rate, this is my two-party rate, this is your family rate. You pay that check to the insurance carrier, they turn around, they cut the checks to the consultant, to the broker, uh, everywhere else it's gonna go. This is, this is important on transparency. This is important on controlling your costs. How do you control your costs if you don't know where they're going, right? So uh, transparency of that is obviously super important. So you can see some of the line items here as you move down. If you look at co-op uh, management fee, that's the expense of the actuaries in the program. That's the actual model uh, you know, from a, a program perspective. So you're gonna see where every single dollar goes on a monthly basis, including your claim fund, right? So how much are you funding in? How much is coming out? How much have you been reimbursed from the stop loss company? And what's your bottom line is? What is your, what is your claim fund income? Where are you tracking all along? Now obviously these are transparent tools for you to monitor, but when I turn it over to Nick in a minute, he's gonna talk about the tools that we have, the resources that we have, because ultimately it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to be managing this on a month by month basis for you, and we have a very significant uh, actuarial department that is responsible for mining all of the data for our clients across the country. Because if it's just left to you, not that you can't do it, but it's one other thing. And now you have to go into information, you have to pull it apart on your own, that's our responsibility. Okay, so that concludes my portion on the model. Now, this is what I'll leave you with before I introduce Nick. Regardless of what model you're in, fully insured, self-funded on your own, or through the BSI core model uh, in that leverage buying uh, stop loss protection, it's not enough. It's not enough. When you move to self-funded, understanding the concept of you are the insurance carrier. When you're fully insured, you're basically saying, I'm gonna overpay, but at least I, I'm comfortable with that because I know that I know what my bottom line is. When you move into that self-funded world, we don't let clients do that unless you kind of understand conceptually that that means that there's a level of engagement uh, that you have to look at. Now, very successful, very rewarding over five years if you're able to do that, and we have the tools and resources to do that. BSI Core is not just about the funding model. BSI Core is about us finding that funding model that'll protect our groups from risk. Unequivocally, the best way to do it over five years in this market segment, without a doubt, because we've lived it. We've lived it over the last six, about six years since 2009, seven years. But it has to be paired with best-in-class services which we've always offered to all of our groups. BSI Core is a way for us to bring those two things together. And when you combine those two things together, we think that we can win on healthcare over five years. Okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm gonna introduce Nick Trangooch, our Director of Sales and Client Acquisition. He's gonna talk about the other section of BSI Core. Thank you, sir. All right, everybody still awake? Feeling good? That's good stuff. So, you know, Tony's side of the equation, uh, you know, if you think of it, is the the engine, right? The Ferrari that's gonna that's gonna drive your plan uh, in the right direction, right? What I'm gonna talk about is the, if you, for lack of a better analogy, the BSI team and how we become the the Formula One drivers, the experts that are really gonna put the the the, the pedal down and make sure that we accelerate this in the right direction for you. So again, these are all services, and one of the biggest reasons I chose to join BSI is because of how they differentiate themselves versus other brokers in the market. These are all services that we've provided for clients since our inception, and, and clients large and small. So it's very important uh, that you know, we understand that, that this is something that's inherent in our culture at BSI, and as I get into it, you'll understand more. So again, as Tony mentioned, we don't recommend that you jump into any plan without the right engagement. And in, do, in, in doing so, this is not a set it and forget it type of thing. Yes, it's a five year strategy, but as, as we mentioned, we go to market every year, we make sure that we have a full understanding of what tools and resources are available to you. The model itself is protected by actuaries, right? So on, on, a, on a back end with the 200 members, 20,000, uh, or 200 uh, companies, 20,000 members, it's protected by actuaries. Monthly review of claims data. So they're, they're digging in. There's over 40 reports that are available. We're not asking you guys to take those on, right? Um, you guys, everybody here in the room has a million other things on their plate. We're not asking to dive into the data. We do that for you. We control the model, we protect the model with that. 
on a monthly basis. Uh, you will have access to those reports like Tony showed you on where your claim fund is going. But what do we do with the data, right? What does it mean, right? Identification of cost trends. So when we dig in and you see that you know, the re anti-rejection medicine, right? What does that mean? Where's it going? What's going to happen, right? So we identify that. And so as an example, uh, you know, one of the things that we, this is a specific case, client of ours in the model, looked at it and we found that they had about 18 people in their population that were diabetic, right? So finding out where the money's going is, is look, understanding that somebody that's compliant, meaning that they go to all their pre preventative care meetings, uh, visits with their doctor, track their insulin, all the supplies that are ordered on a regular basis. Somebody who's compliant is $400 per month, right? Somebody who doesn't, right? In this, in this case, it was about 35% of their population that were diabetic weren't compliant. So somebody who doesn't do that is five times as more costly to that employer, right? And again, as, as a self-funded model, you're the insurance carrier. So this is real dollars right to your bottom line. So understanding where the money goes is an extremely important piece of, of driving this model in the right direction and why the data is important. So what do we do with it though, right? So once we understand what happens and, and where the money is, what do we do with that? How do we communicate that to you? So in another example, we found a client that had significant usage of an ER, right? And, and you guys all know that uh, from an ER, st from a care standpoint, ERs are probably the most costly access point to care. Just walking in the door costs $1,000, right? So we, we identified in this client that their ER usage was four times the norm, right? When we dug deeper, we saw that some of the services that they were being that, that were being used at the ER were for minor things, things that could have been addressed at an urgent care, for example. And then when we dug even deeper, we realized that most of this usage was from one location. The ER was right across the street from that location. So all of their employees, you know, were just going to the easiest point. So we put a we put a program in place to educate the employees gave them a list of all the things that they can, uh, they can go seek uh, treatment for at an urgent care, explained the difference between urgent care and ER, gave them a list of all the urgent care facilities within a 10 mile radius of their home, right? And we did an employee education campaign and in six months drove the spend, or drove the utilization down 40%. So that's real dollars right to the bottom line. So the, the data is important, right? And that's one aspect of the financial, uh, driving the financial um, performance of the plan, but also compliance, right? We've lived in, in, in this environment of ACA now for five years, right? Last two has kind of gotten heavy with the reporting that came out. And so, and, and you throw in HIPAA and COBRA and all these other changes that are, that are being thrown at us year over year compliance becomes a financial measure as well, right? It's costly to, to, to keep up with and to make sure that your company is doing the reporting correctly, that you have the right vendors in place. And so we make sure that everybody in this program gets a full compliance review, free of charge. It's included in BSI Core. It's something that if you were to seek this out on your own, law firm, HR consulting firm, you're looking at ten dollars to $15,000 in spend. This is a two to three month process. It's something that they go through an entire process that, um, that the Department of Labor would use if they were coming in to audit you. And at the end, you'll get a binder or two or three that you can push across the desk if you ever were to get audited. It's the full checklist, it's the full process of the Department of Labor, and, and it's extremely valuable for our clients. And, uh, and, it, and just as a side note, we did have a client that got audited Department of Labor used the binders, everything went smoothly. They loved it. We got a call saying thanks. So, you know, extremely valuable. Making sure your plan's compliant, your policies, your handbooks, all that stuff gets, gets reviewed. COBRA, right? Kind of last on the list. People think, hey, it's, uh, you know, kind of just happens, right? But it is. It's included in BSI Core. So whether you're doing it in-house or you're using a vendor, we can work with your existing vendor. It's included, as I said, 
but making sure that you're also compliant, right? So a lot of companies in this size segment uh, may not realize that when an employee's hired, right, that, and they become eligible or they become eligible for benefits, that an initial rights notification has to go out, right? So just little stuff like that, making sure that um, we, we keep you covered there. And again, it, we're agnostic in terms of who we work with, but we wanna make sure that you're not doing it in-house uh, because it, it, there's no point. It's, it's easy enough to handle from an outsourcing standpoint and, and keep, you, keep you in compliance. All right, ACA, the dirty word. Uh, from an ACA standpoint, uh, again, the, the, nothing's happened, right? So for five years, kind of just heard about it, changes every year, things get pushed off. Well, we finally, just, we finally just completed those forms. Everybody had to send in the, the, the filings. Now is when they're start, those fines are gonna start coming, right? Now is when those, those reviews are gonna start happening. You're gonna get that call, hey, we wanna come in, we wanna sit down and see where the money is, right? So making sure that from an ACA standpoint, uh, our clients are covered. We're, again, we, we will work with any vendor. Uh, BSI has, has you know, full expert awareness of what the qualifications are. We'll, do the, you know, we'll help you with the modeling, the look back periods, understanding you know, your eligibility and, and things of that nature. One of the Lehigh Valley's largest employers actually pulled us in uh, at the end of last year when, uh, when ACA was kind of falling apart. Their vendor raised their hand and said, hey, we're not gonna be ready for you. And when we came in, uh, we were able to not only work with that vendor to, to give them a sorry, right, in the form of a $150,000 check back, but we also sourced, we went to RFP, sourced a new vendor that was able to get, the, get ACA reporting up and running in a timely fashion so that they were able to meet their obligations. So definitely something that we're versed in, uh, making sure that uh, our clients have what they need to, to complete that. 5,500, when you... Uh, are going self-funded and you're in the model, uh, you may not have had to file a 5,500 before in your current environment, depending on your size, uh, but our 5,500s come signature ready. So all you have to do is sign it and it's done for you. Okay. Plan optimization. So this is another tool, right, as Tony mentioned, about you know, you're just shifting costs, right? So a lot of times we see those one-year fixes where companies are, are making decisions on how to save money on the, on the premium by shifting costs, whether it's moving to a high deductible, uh, an HSA, HRA, uh, or you know, doing a tiered network like that's coming out with a lot of these places. That's a, those are one-year fixes. And, and certainly, the, they have merits, right? BSI was one of the early adopters for high deductible HSA plans. Definitely have merits in, in working with those designs but not doing it in a vacuum, right? Making sure that you have the data, making sure that we align with your goals, right? So as an organization, what are your goals for employee engagement, right? How do you want your benefits to, to interact with your overall compensation package, right? So making sure that we align those decisions with the data and with your long-term strategy as an organization. All right, so this is, this is something that we take great pride in our leveraged ancillary savings. So similar to the model on the health side, we, we leveraged BSI's book of business, a little north of $250 million, uh, around your other lines of coverage. And we make sure that we work with those strategic partners to get you the best benefits for the lowest cost. Right? And, and again, it's a significant book, and, and we have some very strong partnerships that, that create significant value. Uh, we were able to save one client uh, you know, a little over three hundred thousand dollars on their on their group life policy alone. So, uh, definitely something that that we take pride in, and I think is important as part of this model. So this is interesting. This is this is a, a patient advocate. It's included in the model. You BSI Core uh, again wanting to make sure that we round out uh, the offering in terms of what we do for our clients. This is something that every client in the in the model has. Patient advocacy. So if, you're, if your employee uh, could be something big or small, right? But let's say they get diagnosed with cancer. They're going to their doctor's meeting. Even before they go to that meeting, if they wanted to get set up with a specialist, it might take them a month to get that appointment on their own. We've seen instances where they were given an appointment out a month, 
this Connect Care 3 patient advocacy steps in and gets that appointment done in the next week, right? Gets them moved up the chain. So they have that appointment. A registered nurse will go with them to that appointment. You can imagine your employee gets diagnosed with cancer, their mind's all over the place. You know, they're not thinking about where they're at in the moment. They're thinking about what their family's gonna go through, thinking about what's gonna happen. This, the RN will make sure that they're prepared to ask the right questions, uh, take all the notes from the doctor, make sure that the follow-up and any follow-up appointments are handled, right? They'll walk them through all their explanation of benefits, find specialists, things of that nature to make sure that the quality of care continues. So really important and impactful uh, service there. So this is, I've seen this firsthand uh, in my short time at, at BSI. We, we call it white glove service, right? So we have our team uh, and, and they really dive in. So as I said before, every one of you in the room has a million other jobs to do it when you get to, to the office at 1030 hopefully, right? So it's important that those employees that are coming knocking on your door and asking you questions about their benefits or, you know, hey, you know, this wasn't covered or, you know, I, can you help me explain this? We want to we want that we want to be the first line of defense for you on that. We want to make sure that your employees feel comfortable coming to us. Uh, we have instances at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. One of our clients' employees will go to CVS and their card, you know, their their prescription's not covered. We get on the phone. We make sure that we handle that. So, from from that standpoint, we never tell our clients to call the eight hundred number on the back of the card. Very, you know, very important service for our clients. Employee communication education. So from a uh, ongoing, you know, kind of uh, jumping off from the, the, from the client standpoint is we handle everything from start to finish. So the open enrollment meetings, the uh, employee uh, communication, education, uh, we'll do all that. We have clients with three shifts. We'll do an em open enrollment meeting at two in the morning if that's what works. So again, it's that white glove service, making sure that the, the education to the employees and making sure that they understand um, you know, what the options are for them, how to enroll, uh, what the coverage is, who to see, things of that nature, uh, all come from BSI. All right, so this is something that I lived and breathed for eight years, as you probably saw in my bio. The, the technology piece of the equation uh, often is one of those uh, you know, thorns in your side, things that as we mentioned with that ACA before, um, you know, it's the implementation of, of technology that gets challenging. The sales guy will come in and say, hey, we'll get this up and running for you in two weeks, right? No problem. Well, be prepared for seven months, right? So BSI has worked with all these vendors. We've, we've got strategic relationships with, with quite a few. And we make sure that, you know, we act as, we act as your, your pivot point, your tipping point between the two, between the vendor, between the carriers, making sure that they communicate, making sure that the, the plans get loaded, that the carrier connections are built the way they should be, that, that all of that happens in a timely fashion with minimal interruption to your, to, your, uh, to your employees and to your business as a whole. So this is definitely um, you know, hot topic, right? As, as ACA become, and the reporting becomes more and more uh, in, ingrained all of these vendors are, will have a solution for you and, and they're all gonna be knocking on your door, making sure that you understand that you have an, an advocate and BSI to help you navigate that process. And again, just as a, as, a, as a jumping off point from a technology standpoint, we often go to RFP for our clients. We were asked to do an RFP for, for again, one of the largest businesses in the Lehigh Valley, um, but now we're gonna take that RFP and, and we're gonna do it for a large group of, of companies in the Lehigh Valley here. So. Um, you know, it's something that we, that we take pride in. All right, so wellness. Uh, you guys might be tired of hearing this word, right? Some of you may have wellness plans in place. You wonder what they do, what they accomplish. These are some of your traditional wellness, um, you know, programs. They have, they have merit, right? They do. They, they're, but only if they're managed, right? And that's what BSI does. So we're not going to put this back on your desk. We're not going to put a walking program or flu shots on your desk. We actually put goals to it. Normal participation rate on a company-run wellness plan in the teens, 17, 18% employee participation. With BSI, when BSI manages the wellness program and we do it, we set goals. 50% is our goal. Right now we're about 60% participation across all of our, our wellness programs. And traditional wellness is great, 
But when we have access to data, right, like we do in this model, we can really dig in. I mentioned the ER example. That's an example of a wellness um, a program that we did. And then when we do specific targeted wellness programs, that drives real dollars back into the employer's pocket, right? So we're not talking about the traditional wellness that you might have heard and you know, put a tracker in your pocket and, and make sure you get your steps in. This is real, real programs based on data, okay? So all of that was, you know, the services behind it that are driving, again, the financial aspect. They touch your employees from an from a engagement standpoint, uh, from a, from a uh, service standpoint. We make sure that your, your employees have the, the, the support that they need, the, ex the education that they need. And, that, and all of that, the actuarial support, the, the, um, the compliance review, all of that is a financial measure to keep, continue to drive the program in the right direction. But let's not forget, I mean, especially with the size of the groups that are in the room, you live and work in the same area as these employees. They're people, they're not, just an, they're not just a number to you, right? So we make sure that we live up to our mission statement, that we're an advocate for our clients on a human and financial level, but mostly on the human level. So I want you to listen to something real quick. Hey, Pat McMahon, how are you? Got to come over to you in this space. Listen, I'm calling to make you aware of something you know, that you guys helped uh, prevent. Um, because we had you guys, and then because of Geisinger, uh, they came in and did some screening. Uh, they did the thyroid and the carotid screening. And uh, one of our young ladies here um, ended up having thyroid cancer. Uh, she had not been feeling well. Uh, she felt a lump in her throat. She didn't know what it was. It was just a coincidence that we were having the thyroid cancer screening. Uh, she had a biopsy. It was cancerous, and she's having it removed uh, next month. But without you guys and the wellness program, and, you know, I know Geisinger did it, but you guys, we wouldn't have done it if we weren't with you guys. So um, you got to take some credit for this. Uh, the wellness program for her is possibly, uh, and it's, it was growing fast, so they were moving it fairly quickly. But um, give me a call back when you get a moment. Uh, five, seven, six, because it's stuff like that that you know, just you can't you know, obviously you can't put a price on. It's just uh, uh, wonderful. This lady is so thankful that we caught it, uh, and you know we caught it by accident, but we caught it because we we hired you guys. Corporate environments and and one point is a great client of ours, great partner, great friend, um, and. When we, we listen to that voicemail often, um, you know, just to remind ourselves and, and the team the impact that we have uh, on our clients and their employees. And you know, earlier one of, our, one of our team said, oh, if I hear that, I'm gonna get chills. And it's true, I mean, these, these are real things that happen when we do, when we do what we do every day. These are things that, that, that happen that, that make it all worthwhile. So um, we hope that you got a lot out of today. I'm gonna bring Tony and Sean back up uh, we're going to answer some questions for you. We're pretty much right on time. We're, we're doing great on time. So uh, if you guys have questions, please ask. We, we're, we're here for you. Uh, we want to make sure that you get the most value out of today. Mr. Miller. In your, in your example of compliant versus non-compliant uh, diabetics, what does BSI do to make the non-compliant diabetics become compliant? It's a great question. We actually did a campaign where, you know, we do an employee, a company-wide education, right, to make sure that we stay compliant with the HIPAA laws. We don't target anybody out, but we do a company-wide education. Uh, we provide incentives for employees to come to uh, an education fair, maybe at the employee site. Uh, we do, a, you know, a, a clinic that day on the on the on the site, and we provide, you know, financial incentives for them to come there, um, and then ultimately also incentivize them to sign up for uh, a diabetic newsletter that would provide ongoing tips and guidance, like an email newsletter that they would get. So again, an education, you know, it's company-wide, but definitely targeted at those individuals. And we'd like to think that everybody does things just based on the idea that, you know, you want to control diabetes because you, you want to keep all your limbs would be enough. It's not. <laughs> you see it every day. It's just not. And I think that that's important to understand, which is you want people to do the right things, but we also have to come up with programs uh, that incent them. Uh, we are big fans of 
trying the carrot first before you bring the stick. Right? So those, those are two ways in which you can approach compliance. It's always nice with employees to try the carrot program first so you have that to fall back on if that doesn't work and you're forced to move in a, in a direction you know, of the stick. Because nobody, that's not, a, that's not an enjoyable conversation. So uh, carrot type programs to be able to get people uh, incented. Uh, fortunately, representing the Iron Pigs and the Phantoms, uh, we got about 465 events a year that we <laughs> need to figure out who to send to. So uh, the tickets seem to be popular. The, uh, the care program that you talked about where an RN would uh, accompany a patient uh, or, or prepare them to ask the right questions, is that, is that something that you manage the logistics of in, internally? Connect Care 3, Connect Connect Care 3 is, right. is run through uh, Benicon, which is our managing agency. So it's lo located in Lyditz, Pennsylvania. Uh, so they've got a full staff and a division uh, of Benicon that has those pieces. This is the way that we break out those two pieces. So Connect Care 3 and then our own customer service. Connect Care 3 is designed for people before they enter the system. When they're diagnosed with these types of, of ailments and they need to seek second opinions across the country, et cetera. From our customer service perspective, when they're through that, that system, uh, we're the ones that end up handling the hours the, the, on a day-to-day -day basis, the managing of those EOBs. Not that we certainly don't support that process on the front end. That's typically just to understand the, the difference between those two pieces. But it's all fully integrated and, and, and uh, specific to the core program, meaning Connect Care 3 is not a standalone package and it's rolled up under the idea of the entire model. Right behind you. Is there a maximum amount of businesses that can be in a consortium? And if not, as that consortium grows, like, does that increase the buying power of the consortium? Uh, certainly. Uh, the, that, that leverage of the market has continued to grow as the program is in place. Uh, there are, there are, since we have a, a very active public sector division as well, for example, we represent a lot of school districts, municipalities, uh, there's a whole entirely separate uh, consortium uh, model that for those organizations that has continued to grow. And that, it, the, the economies of scale, the bigger you get, it, it applies. Uh, so these are not programs that uh, you know, are capped. Uh, sometimes when you, you see the word captive out there you know, in the world, they do have constraints on that. The larger uh, that the pool grows, the better risk actually becomes predictable. Uh, and the larger that pool grows, it becomes more predictable, and it's also a bigger block of business, which means when we're negotiating things on a two-year basis in the stop-loss market, the more uh, volume that you have, that's going to help uh, benefit the parameters of the program. You know, with respect to stop-loss, the cap stop-loss renewals, all of those pieces when you're coming with a larger piece of business uh, weigh into it. Hey guys, how are you? So my question stems around the five-year, 10-year snapshot of maybe some innovations that are gonna really change the market. I was at Geico a couple of weeks ago. They're already talking about new models around you know, self-driven cars and how it's gonna change the entire market. So my question to you guys is, you know, if you look into the glass ball, you know, 10 years from now, maybe 15 years from now, are there some big swings and some big changes that are gonna change the entire structure? It's funny you actually said that because I, I actually think that our motto is, uh, when I see those commercials, that I, I, in my mind, I'm like, BSI, the opposite of 15 minutes or less. <laughs> because that it really is a, a completely different you know, industry from, from that perspective. And then you mentioned self-driving car, and I would also say this is exactly the opposite of that, in that you can't self-drive this as an employer. Uh, but the five and the 10 year model, uh, I think that you know, we've, there's a lot of things on the horizon, right? But I think that waiting for, you know, I think what Sean started with, if you're waiting for an answer that's coming externally, uh, you know, a savior in any way, uh, it's not, that's not the approach, right? So you know, the idea that this model, this way of leveraging uh, risk over a portion of time is becoming uh, more and more viable in the market. So I think that this is the concept, you know, and I think that's a good segue to, you know, what we're really looking, uh, if you're having a takeaway today, it's not specifically about any one thing other than this is a concept change. You know, in those next 60 to 90 days or going forward, 
when you're in that environment where you're like that hamster on a wheel, this is that time of year you come back from vacation and then all of a sudden it's a mad dash. You know, and you have somebody sitting in front of you and say, well, we could make changes, but if you don't make the decision in the next 24 hours, your members aren't gonna have cars, they're not gonna, you know, you really don't wanna switch carriers, that's disruption. So that year over year, it's more about a concept of a five year. That's really what uh, the takeaway uh, we're hoping is, is that if you start to look at uh, healthcare and managing your benefits over a five year period, like you do everything else in your business, it is possible uh, to do, but it does take a shift in your thinking Specifically when someone says, great news, you get a 1% fully insured increase. Because for most of you in the room, and we do not take this personally, that in your mind is, oh my God, get out of my office. Just <laughs> thank you, I'll see you in 12 months. Leave me alone, can I please not talk to you anymore? Right? And that, that's a shift in concept, not because we, don't like to, we want to be hated, but that's the trigger. When you come in to the model, or you try to come into the model after Rome is burning, it becomes very difficult to get you in. Nick mentioned it's protected by actuaries. It is not easy to get groups into this model. We can assure you uh, of that. It is not come one, come all. Uh, on the way in the door, it's protected by actuaries. That's what delivers on the long-term value uh, of the market. They're not just letting anybody in. And if you wait until somebody drops 40% onto your doorstep, it becomes an extreme challenge. So it's that, that change in mindset that when somebody shows up and says, great news. Instead of saying, thank gosh I don't have to deal with this for another 12 months, it's a trigger to this is an opportunity. Now is my time. Now is my time to be able to shift to that five-year strategy. Yeah, I would also add, I mean, if you're thinking that is there something, is there a magic solution that all of a sudden medical trend is going to go down, right? Unless we all become robots, if we look at the health of this country, it's getting worse and worse every day. 40% um, of diabetics are diabetics today, they don't even know it. So obesity is up. As those things start to climb even higher, that cost of medical uh, insurance is gonna go up. So a lot of people always hate the insurance carrier, but it's that actual cost of medical, what, how we're actually acting as a country. Like if we watch the elections, no one's gonna address some of the health issues that are going on right now. Until we can get that to go down, I think unfortunately that medical cost is gonna continue to climb. And the last thing I'll add though, you know, in terms of, of something new, be aside in, you know, just decide like, hey, let's jump into this, right? They, they, they took a look at, at other options. This isn't a captive, this isn't a MIWA. They all have their place, but this is, this is true consortium level, leverage buying power. Uh, and it gives all the things that we talked about with flexibility on plan design, all those tools that we bring to the table. Um, so while what we do for our clients isn't new, this consortium, you know, is something that we've tested over the last few, few years to make sure it does perform the way that we say and we've given you those client examples. And so to your point uh, and to your question, you know, I think this is something that we're, we're behind as, as you know, a very uh, viable solution for our clients. Um, yeah, your, your um, presentation was largely geared towards uh, employers with 50 to 500 employees. Um, does your model work also for smaller employers, you know, like somebody with 15, 20 employees? And, and if so, do you, uh, work with those employers? Yeah, we can. It, you're going to have restrictions from a carrier level on from an administration standpoint and how low they'll go from a, from an ASO standpoint. So we can. Um, the model definitely works. There's there's definitely opportunity for us to evaluate, though, what might be the best solution and, and understand where you're at today. So. Any other questions? All right, so just before we take off, just a couple of thank yous, obviously, to the Iron Pigs. They've been a, a loyal client of ours for a long time. We obviously enjoy representing them and the Phantoms. They're, they're certainly fun clients uh, you know, to, to represent, but they're amazing partners. Obviously, most of you have lived the, the experience. They bring great value to uh, the Lehigh Valley. So thank you to them. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Blue Mountain uh, here today, but uh, hosted us at an offsite. Uh, if you've never had an opportunity to be Blue Mountain, I ate three meals in one day at Slopeside. Uh, I would stay there all the time if I could with that view. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to say thank you to our staff. We have some of our Midwest staff that's here today. Obviously, some of our people from our East Coast staff. Uh, you know, content's on us. You can judge that that way. Uh, I continue to be humbled every day at the growth of the agency uh, and the little things, uh, the things that you, you kind of uh, don't notice uh, that what goes into it. And I'm so greatly appreciative uh, you know, my staff. I think uh, from a takeaway perspective, 
the biggest takeaway is just asking yourself the question, the, the one year fix, you know, is it working you know, on, on, a, on an ongoing basis? And is it worth evaluating, looking at actually putting a successful five year plan together? And if conceptually there and you want to explore it and actually see with your financials how that plays into uh, the model and what we see for you uh, over the next five years, we're certainly happy to have uh, that conversation you know, with you at any time. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Enjoy your day.